So when the PlayStation Portal was first unveiled to the gaming public, myself and some other people said pretty much the same thing. What's the point of this? It's not really solving a problem, because if the problem is wanting to play your PlayStation with remote play, you could already do that. There's, you could use your cell phone, you could use a tablet, connect a controller to it, get something like the Backbone. It didn't seem to be solving a problem that existed, but Sony, I guess, wanted to do their own sort of thing, even though they backed the Sony Backbone with their official endorsement. Now, I ended up picking up one of these, even though I was pretty harsh on it in my video, because I really wanted to see what it was all about. I'm someone who likes handheld games and handheld gaming. I own a bunch of handheld devices, the ROG Ally, the Steam Deck, a Switch, a couple Switch is you know various retro gaming handhelds i like handheld devices and i like being able to play games while i'm watching tv so i picked up a playstation portal and i want to talk about the good and the bad about it because i think there are some really good things but then there's some things that are a bit concerning all right so here is our playstation portal it is a beefy boy i was you know, not super surprised with the size of it, but whenever you see these handhelds and you kind of get them in your hands, whether it's a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally, or in this case, the PlayStation Portal, you're always like, damn, man, this is, this is, kind, of a, this is kind of a beefy boy. We could see here this excellent PlayStation packaging. It just rips, so I won't be saving the box for this. Taking a look at the box itself, it has a little outer casing on it that... You know, it confused your boy. He wasn't quite sure. You know how I am with Labo and stuff like that. And then I noticed, hey, it just slides out from the side. Nice little packaging here. I like the little corner piece so that you can open it easily. But that doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to use it unless I have to. And here is our PlayStation Portal well packaged. Um, first impressions, it's lighter than I thought it would be. And I kind of like that, you know, I was kind of a little bit worried about the, the weight of it and really just the sturdiness of it, because essentially it's a elongated dual sense controller with a screen in the middle of it. And while it looks kind of, you know, janky as far as the creation of the device itself, I think it feels pretty good in your hand. The screen itself, as you can see here, nice, big, clear. You could see me in the reflection. It's so clear. It's it's a nice screen. Like, it, it's definitely very nice. And just the overall design of it, while it doesn't look all that great, if it's ergonomically good, then that's all that really matters. We have our instructions here. At this point in time, I was like, hey, where's my charging cable? Because I, I know I'm going to need a charging cable. But then I looked, and it was on the opposite side of the packaging. And I was very grateful to see that a little USB-C to USB-C connection. I can use it with a myriad of different things. As you can see, I open things up like a Neanderthal here. But, you know, I, I'm just I'm interested in getting it open itself. But I definitely... You know think it's a it's a solid system comparing it to steam deck size very similar but i will say it is a bit lighter than the steam deck and i i kind of like the button layout a, a bit more than the steam deck even though it's very similar this does feel a bit more comfortable it feels very sturdy i don't feel like i'm gonna you know break it in half by playing it or anything like that so that's a good thing taking a look at the nintendo switch obviously a bit bigger than the switch but decent overall build quality. You know, I was I was pleasantly surprised with that portion of this PlayStation Portal. After setting everything up and doing all the network connection stuff, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I have the PlayStation Portal up and running, ran into a few hiccups here, and I'm just kind of noticing as I'm scrolling through the menus and stuff like that, it doesn't look like super clear and that kind of surprised me a bit and I, I wasn't sure why that necessarily was the case I tried to go and adjust some settings of the device itself but you can't do that you actually have to do this through your PlayStation 5 itself my PlayStation 5 is connected via an Ethernet connection so if you want to adjust the pic you kind of have to adjust the picture of your PlayStation 5 to match this device here because of the fact that this device does not support 120 uh refresh rate on it or something like 4k visuals so that's a little bit strange to me you know i would feel like that would be something you could potentially control from this because the image you know it, it doesn't look nearly as good as it as it probably should have so i played around with it for a little bit and then came to the conclusion that hey I need to adjust these settings here and sort of, you know, figure it out. Because once you get into like an actual match here, like I'm showing in this game, it just was not working up to snuff. So after changing up the settings, 
the picture quality got a lot better, but then I started having issues with just the games running itself. And I know that this device is supposed to run very smoothly. I've seen some of my friends have this run very smoothly, and I was just kind of racking my brain as to why, while I'm sitting right next to my internet connection, why this was not working. And then I kind of got into a rabbit hole trying to figure this out. And I came across some very interesting discoveries with this that we're going to talk about now. All right. So essentially what happened is the PlayStation 5 portal requires a 5 gigahertz internet connection. Now, obviously I have that, but I also have a 2.4 gigahertz. It's through my optimum Wi-Fi router that I got from the ISP themselves. I haven't upgraded it or anything because I really haven't had a need to. But what ended up happening is optimum Wi-Fi uses something called smart Wi-Fi, which combines the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz signal into one signal. And for whatever reason, when I was setting up my PlayStation, portal and even went in after the fact trying to find my Wi-Fi router it was only finding my Wi-Fi extender and so I was connected to that and then it, it just wouldn't find my router I literally put up a Twitter post about it very confused about it and I ended up just being bored I was sitting on the couch and I sat there and I refreshed the internet about 10 times and on the 10th time my router popped up so now I'm like, what? So it does work? Like, I don't have any sort of rhyme or reason for it, but I did finally get it connected to my Wi-Fi router and the system itself using the standard connection, and these are the results I got. All right, so now we're playing some more AEW Fight Forever, and as you can see, everything is looking and playing as it should. This screen, honestly is quite gorgeous I, i'm not quite sure how well the camera will pick up just the clarity of it but it is an absolutely fantastic looking screen here and this game is running exactly how it should i'm not noticing any major input lag or any gameplay hiccups or anything it honestly feels exactly like as if i was playing it on my playstation 5 on my tv so obviously there was an issue with the router situation i i don't really know kind of why that was and how it automatically fixed i am a little bit worried that it might mess up again you know and maybe my internet connection will, will lose itself but now that it's at least saved onto there you know i shouldn't run into any major issues so now this is running picture perfect exactly how it should looking great playing great so now i'm feeling a bit more positive about this playstation portal next up we'll take a look at tekken 2 which i also have downloaded on my playstation 5 the classic playstation 2 game and once again you know everything is looking good it's playing good it feels very smooth i will say i was a little bit confused on how you you have to use the touchpad in order to press start to get into the menu of this game and i was having a little bit of trouble here but there's the little buttons that you have that are like the pseudo fake buttons on the sides of the screen that you saw i just tapped it there to skip past the uh, replay but other than that you know everything felt really well done and everything looked fantastic this this screen just really has vibrant colors on it and everything looks really good and it's playing you know exactly how Tekken 2 should play so now we're two for two I'm feeling pretty confident then we got a little bit of a hiccup here we're playing Wreckfest for PlayStation 5 I wanted to stream it but you can't do any streaming on this from your PlayStation uh, Plus account that's a really nice feature we'll talk about some of the downsides of this in just a moment everything seemed to be running well and then all of a sudden like I hit some hiccups with this and it was definitely very noticeable it got a little bit slowed down here and you could see like extremely choppy and once again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure why, because I'm sitting in the exact same place recording all of this footage. So there, there's no change in my environment or anything like that. So I was a bit perplexed by this. I didn't know if this was just a, a one-time thing or something like that. So I kept playing some more games, checking out some more stuff. About an hour or so later, I didn't really run into any issues or anything like that like I experienced with Wreckfest. I booted up God of War Ragnarok, just a random save that I had because, I don't know, people might still cry about spoilers here. And this ran absolutely perfect. And once again, this is definitely a, a looker of a game here, and it looks absolutely fantastic on the screen. You can notice that the dual sense sides are lighting up like they should. There is haptic feedback on this as well. And once again, I, I'm sitting in the same position at my 
kitchen table. Um, so I'm not quite sure, like, what exactly happened with Wreckfest on, on this because the environment was the exact same. It was just, like, for whatever reason, that one game I experienced some hiccups in. I checked out some more PlayStation 2 stuff off camera, checked out some PlayStation 4 games that I had downloaded on my PlayStation 5 as well. Everything seemed to be working exactly how it should. It was just, I did notice that with Wreckfest, but this is a gorgeous looking game with a gorgeous screen. So now I kind of want to talk about, now that I've actually experienced the device working at its peak, I want to talk about the positives of it and some of the drawbacks of it so we can kind of figure out whether this is a device that you should pick up or not. So when the PlayStation Portal actually works and I got everything set up properly, I actually like it. Like, I really like the screen that this device has. I think it's very vibrant, very crisp, and the colors really pop on it as well. I think the battery life is pretty damn good on this too, and I like the way it just feels in my hands. I'm not the biggest fan of the DualSense controller, but this feels a little bit slimmer than a standard DualSense controller, but it still has all of the features, such as the haptic feedback and stuff like that, which I like. It feels very comfortable in my hands. It doesn't feel like it's flimsy or going to break or anything like that. So so once everything was set up and working properly, I definitely was enjoying my time with the PlayStation Portal. However, it is a little bit concerning that it could not find my router for literally like an hour. It could not find it, and then it just randomly found it. Now, I do have it saved onto my device now, but I have to wonder if other people are going to run into that issue too. The whole fact that you have to adjust how your PlayStation 5 is actually set up for visual output onto your television in order for it to change what it's doing on the portal because the portal isn't capable of things like 120 uh, refresh rate. That's kind of a bit annoying as well. I feel like there should be something, you know, built into the system that can allow that. Now, while my experience was mostly good once it was set up properly, I did have that dip with Wreckfest that I can't really explain because I sat there and played this for literally hours in the same position just trying a bunch of different games. But really, the biggest caveat to the system is it's not really a portable system. Like, I guess you could get like a little bag for it and carry it around with you. But if you plan on using public Wi-Fi, you may find yourself at a disadvantage. If the public Wi-Fi that you are using requires a web browser for you to log into, you can't do that on the PlayStation Portal. You could do it on every other device under the sun, but the PlayStation Portal does not have an accessible web browser that will pop up allowing you to log in. So that kind of really severely limits what you're able to do with your PlayStation Portal in a public setting. Another thing that I find kind of head scratching is they've recently added in for PlayStation Plus members, I believe it's in the you know premium tier or whatever, that you can stream games from your PlayStation 5 without having to download them. But the device itself, the PlayStation Portal, doesn't allow that. So a key feature that was added into PlayStation Plus Premium is not available on your PlayStation Portal. Just seems like a bit of an oversight. Couple that with the fact that you can't play any PlayStation 3 games on this because those are all streaming. And there's some things that need to be tidied up with this. I, I feel like at its core, it's not the worst idea in the world. And I was actually kind of surprised with how it worked in my house. It didn't work super well in my bedroom, but downstairs here in the basement, it actually worked really, really well. And I wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting you to have some sort of hiccups, but then I kind of go back to the wreck fest situation. Why was that being hiccupy? Like, I don't know. It's still not as good as a native experience, but as kind of a sidekick, I don't really hate it. You know, I have a backbone that I'll be checking out on the channel as well. I'm actually doing a sponsor spot with them. I've never used the backbone, but I kind of like just how small it is. And I want to sort of compare the experience to the PlayStation portal as well. So that'll be something I'll be talking about in the future. But I, I don't hate the portal. You know, I was frustrated with it. It was definitely kind of annoying having it just have all these issues once it's set up. But except for the blip with Wreckfest, I've actually had a pretty enjoyable experience with this. And I think it might actually potentially potentially persuade where I buy games on it now that I have this and I can play these games in handheld mode with this device like I don't know maybe I'll check out some more PlayStation 5 third-party offerings and maybe prioritize the PlayStation 5 version over the Xbox Series X version I guess time will tell with that those are my thoughts on the PlayStation Portal a bit of an up and down roller coaster mixed emotions that's a song by a band called Alley with an Eye. They were a punk band. I saw them when they were when I was like 16. I really liked them, and then they, they broke up. But there's actually 
the song is on YouTube. Mixed Emotions. Alley with an eye is the name of the band. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I might answer them. I might not. I feel like I pretty much covered all the bases with this device. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit the bell as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.